Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, what a day. It's going to rain, by the way. <laughs> but I am so happy you are here. Earlier this afternoon, we celebrated our first car mess at 2 p.m. And the graciousness of God is amazing. He held back the rain. So we were able to celebrate with our friends who joined us. So I am elated that you are here to celebrate this nativity of the um, incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who became man just because he loves us so much. So I'm so happy that you are here. A couple of announcements for you. Um, prayers and music can always be found in the um in our worship aid and our worship aid is online at www.stclairesi.com one word stclairesi.com so if you have your phone take it out <laughs> put it on silence and go on our website and there you'll see the program with all the readings so you can pray with us there are three different readings listed, so look for the readings that are appropriate for this Mass, which is the 4 p.m. Mass. Um, as we are celebrating the birth of our Lord, um, we want to remember that unfortunately we are still in the middle of a global pandemic. And looking at all of you, I'm so thankful because you all have your mask on and your mask covers both your nose and your uh in your 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 mouth so I, I thank you for that keep it that way as we continue to worship together um please practice social distancing make sure that you are not sitting too close to others i can see i have plenty of space <laughs> unless of course the person is from your own house <laughs> i can see that we have plenty of space on that side so if you feel like someone is too close to you, please feel free to move to a spot where you can um, have um, your proper distance. Um, if you sit in a pew, unless of course you're moving because you're too close to another person, we ask you to stay there um, so that other people do not come sit in it before it is sanitized. Um, the mess schedule for the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, is on our website where you are right now getting the music. Um, so we hope you can come back and join us for the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. Um, the Rosca de Reyes, which is a new tradition we started here at St. Clair's. I got a beautiful email yesterday from a parishioner thanking us for starting it. Um, um, when you're leaving the church today, be sure you get your baby Jesus figurine, okay, so that you can bake it, give a slice to someone. Whoever gets the baby Jesus is the winner. And let us know who that, you got it already? Oh, <laughs> some people have already baked it. I have my own bread Kathy made for me. So make sure you find the baby Jesus and let us know who that person is so we can give them a gift. We are very happy to have you here with us to celebrate the birth of our Lord. A Merry Christmas to all of you. And if I don't see you next week, a happier and healthier 2021. God bless you all. Good evening. So please stand as we begin our Mass with, O oh, come all ye faithful, which you all know by now. Um, you don't need words. Oh, no. 
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, once again this year, Jesus Christ is born among us. Into the lowliness of the Bethlehem stable to encourage us to get through our own loneliness, our own struggles, our own sinfulness, our own weakness. Because we are weak and sinful, we turn to the compassionate Father with confidence in his power to forgive us, and we say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait and hope for our redemption, Grant that as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, for you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. 
As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Be to God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-faring, listen. The God of his people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it, Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. 
This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Pope Francis has called upon the Church to celebrate this year from this past 8th of December to December 8, 2021, as a year dedicated to St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. The Pope said that he did this so that, quote, every member of the faithful following Joseph's example may strengthen their life of faith daily in the complete fulfillment of God's will, end of quote. Let us therefore take this special opportunity, this Christmas night, to intensify our personal relationship with St. Joseph, the guardian of the Redeemer. For if we cannot relate to Joseph of Bethlehem, and appreciate his situation, his challenging life, then we must have easy and pleasant lives indeed. And we all know that, at least this year, such has not been the case. Over the years, all of us have or have had difficult and challenging decisions before us, about which we have thought and prayed and sought advice. For you, it may have been related to marriage, as it was for Joseph himself, as related in tonight's Gospel reading. It may have been divorce. It may have been going to school or choosing a career or beginning retirement. It may have been surgery or some other treatment. For Joseph, of course, it was marriage or divorce, an awesome consideration. You see, in those days, in ancient Israel, marriage normally had three stages. First came the engagement, in which the marriage partner was selected. This would normally have been an arranged marriage, worked out beforehand by the families. The second step was the betrothal, which lasted about a year and required total faithfulness to one another. As a matter of fact, in order to break off the betrothal, one had to actually secure a bill of divorce. The third stage was that of marriage itself actually moving in together. It was at the second step that we find Joseph in tonight's Gospel faced with this monumental decision. It was during the betrothal stage, which required complete faithfulness to one another, and yet did not permit them to know one another intimately, that Joseph found Mary to be with child. 
And because of the otherworldly circumstances, it surely surprised Mary as much as it did Joseph. St. Matthew says two things about Joseph, both of which made his decision that much more difficult. First, Matthew says Joseph was a just and righteous man. And what that meant back then was that he was known for keeping a comfortable and safe distance from those who were considered unrighteous. Imagine the Blessed Virgin Mary being considered a woman of compromised values. That was the pressure Joseph was feeling. What would the people say if this good man with a fine reputation continued to be seen with this young woman who was inexplicably pregnant and yet not fully married? Matthew also says that Joseph was unwilling to expose Mary to public shame. It was not Joseph's desire to disgrace and humiliate Mary. Joseph was sensitive to the horrible ways a divorced single mother could be treated. Joseph decided that if it must be divorce, he would do so quietly without playing it out for personal benefit or sympathy. So for Joseph, it was marriage or divorce. And what we know about him tells us that this was a very difficult decision. To uphold his reputation in the community, what choice did he have but to divorce this young woman? In order to maintain his family's dignity and honor, he had to distance himself from Mary. At first it may have sounded like an easy option for Joseph, marriage or divorce, but when we begin to weigh all the factors, most importantly Joseph's love for Mary, we appreciate that Joseph's decision must have been a very difficult one. Matthew does say that Joseph decided to divorce Mary. But then an angel comes on the scene. Perhaps we can imagine the angel saying, Joseph, don't be afraid to do what you really want to do. Don't be afraid to risk your reputation. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because God has a part in what is going on here. And because of the angel's visit, Joseph changed his mind and took Mary into his home. So it seems that no matter how you look at it, Joseph does model for us what it is like to struggle with a difficult decision. And he handles the decision in a powerful and in a hopeful way. In Joseph, we find one who is willing to risk being unpopular, one who is willing to reject the easy way out, one who is willing to face a most difficult circumstance. In Joseph, we find one who takes a courageous stand and then does what is right. It must have been a very lonely decision that decision which would affect the history of the world for the next 2,000 years. We can't know what would have happened to Mary and her unborn child had Joseph not taken them in. So thank God for the Christmas angel. That is, God's word spoken again and again to the people whom God loves. In the Old Testament, Abraham and Sarah heard the angel, as did Moses and Daniel. Then an angel spoke to the women at the empty tomb, as well as to the apostles who were in prison, and to Paul in the midst of a storm at sea. Of course, at this time of year, our most favorite angel stories are those that have to do with Mary and Joseph. To Mary, the promise of a most special baby. To Joseph, the encouragement to stay with his plans to marry the young woman who was pregnant. That's what Christmas is, my brothers and sisters. It's the promise and the encouragement that God's Word brings, even in the midst of the most difficult situations. And yes, angels still speak today. God's Word to teenagers and moms, and people separated from their families. 
probably to all of us at times when we stand fearfully at a crossroads in life. Who knows who these angels are? Some people talk lots about guardian angels. But we have yet to hear of a guardian angel pushing someone to do something difficult or unpopular or risky. The angels of our nativity stories are more often found leading people away from themselves and into the fray. These are angels with messages to do what is right and loving and just. And surely in those most difficult times, when what is right and loving and just is not clear, that is in times like our very own, the word of God comes to us to calm our fears and direct our thoughts. Angels, God's word, God's very self, they all sound to me like the very same thing. Most of us can escape difficult situations and decisions for very long. From family matters to financial ones, from health concerns to career choices, from deciding what is right to caving in to peer pressure, the decisions we must make are weighty ones. This Christmas, we rejoice that we do not make any decision alone. The very promise which the angel brought to Joseph is our promise as well. The angel said, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The promise of Emmanuel is that when we are weighing the options carefully in the midst of difficult decisions, we are in the presence of the one true God who is always for us and always with us. One of these days, we will find ourselves telling a friend about the time when we thought that we just wouldn't make it. The path was too difficult. The decision was too hard. The journey back was too rough, and it didn't seem worth it. We will tell that friend that we believed there would be no way out. And when that time comes, a patient friend will look lovingly and admiringly at us and ask, well, what changed? How were you able to overcome it? And we will say, yes, it really was that tough. But then came the angel. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Please stand and let us together profess our faith at Christmas time during the words and became man we will genuflect and pause briefly at the wonder of the incarnation and then rise for the rest of the creed I will lead you in that I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son, Son, who with the Father, Father and the Son, Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken, spoken through, through the, the prophets. prophets. I believe, I believe in one, one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, with Christ's light shining on us this night, let us pray to God for the needs of our world, our church, our families, as together we respond. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For Pope Francis and the church, he shepherds, that we may be a light in a darkened world to the hearts of all, we pray to the Lord. Gracious, Gracious Lord, Lord, hear us, we pray. pray. For our leaders, world, national, and local, that Christ, the light of the world, may turn their minds and hearts to thoughts of peace and healing for all. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For our country, that the Prince of Peace may tear down the walls that divide us and bring us together as one nation under God. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For those living in fear during these uncertain times and for those who must celebrate who must celebrate the birth of Christ alone because of the pandemic, that they may know that they are not forgotten and the good news of Christmas season is also theirs. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For all who are lonely, sick, emotionally exhausted, especially the sick listed in our bulletin and parish book of intercessions, that Christ who shares our humanity may renew their strength and rekindle their hope, we pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For all of our loved ones who have died, and especially for the deceased members of the DeWaters family, Sister Clavier, and deceased members of the Highland family, for whom we particularly remember at this Mass, that the light of Christ may shine upon them and console their families who are grieving their loss. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. With joyful praise and grateful hearts, we add our prayers and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. Throughout the year of St. Joseph, we'll be reciting together at the end of the prayer of the faithful the following prayer to St. Joseph. I don't know if it's in your programs. I don't even know if you have a program. But in any event, we'll learn it over the course of the year. Uh, and if uh, perhaps it's on your phone on the website, but uh, tonight's the first night that we'll say it. Uh, Hail, Hail, guardian, guardian of, of the Redeemer, Redeemer spouse of the, of the Blessed, Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary to you, God, entrusted, entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly 
for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, for those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our uh, Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and all your saints, we ask that through these merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred night, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of the world, we especially honor her and give true glory to you. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and a kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, our beloved deceased, resting as they do in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace 
We commend to you all of our beloved deceased of this past year, and we think especially of those faithful who have succumbed to the coronavirus. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus took on our flesh and spoke as we do so that we can turn to the Father in prayer using words taught by him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not, Lord, on our sins, look rather on our faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant to us that peace and unity which is in accord with your will in that kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the newborn king be always with you. And with your spirit. Please extend to one another a gesture of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We are a rather lar large uh, crowd here this evening, so I would ask you to be attentive to the distancing rules. We can take them for granted. Keep the appropriate space between us as we come up the center aisle. Don't remove our mask until we arrive at the communion station, and so forth. All of those things uh, that we have been taught to maintain uh, the safe practices we have uh, accomplished for so many weeks now, so many months. Yeah. 
Christ
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that we may draw new vigor. Does anybody out there think that there's vigor to be gotten <laughs> to get through the rest of what lies ahead? Isn't that what we need? New vigor. I know you'll hear from now till the end of next week, the New Year's Eve and New Year, all of these uh, sayings about what a year it has been. So I won't say what everybody knows already, what a year it has been. Um, but we who have faith believe that new vigor is possible. I'll give you an example. You see this lovely vestment that I'm wearing? This is my first mass vestment. So it's over 30 years old. I bought it before I was ordained in Rome, it was uh, very expensive, made by the sisters in some, in the catacombs, I think. And it was very Italian material, pura lana vergine, the Italians come up with all kinds of words for this year. Uh, but you know what, over the years it got very tattered, and it was all worn in the shoulders from hanging on a hanger, and I had given up, give up hope on it, you know. And when I came back here to saying, and I'm sure I wore this uh, in, in its newness at St. Clair 30 years ago. But when I came back, I was showing it to our sacristan, Kathy. Is she here tonight? Kathy here tonight? Showing it to Kathy, and she said, oh, you know, she's not an Italian. I have an aunt who's a seamstress. <laughs> well, this is the result. Amen. Fix the soldiers, <laughs> fix everything. So, new vigor is always possible. And uh, that is what we are celebrating at Christmas, because, you know, a couple of nights ago, it was the longest night of the year. The, the, the darkness was at its height. Um, but we know that because uh, God has created a world that has order and reason and goodness to it, that it's going to change around. So the past couple of nights have been less long than the one before it. Uh, and God has broken the back of the winter solstice. This has been a very long Advent, not only the Advent that began on that last November weekend, but also the advent that began back in the middle of March. It continues, but we go into it with the, with the knowledge, with the certitude that it's back, the back of the darkness has been broken by the Lord of light and hope. And that's, I think, what is a big part of our Christmas celebration, even in the midst of darkness, which continues. So thank you all for continuing to make uh, St. Clair's the beautiful place that it is and has been for so many years. Thank you for all who are responsible for making these liturgies so beautiful, our musicians, our ministers, our florists, uh, all on our staff who have done so much to make these uh, services go on with, uh, with new vigor. The Lord be with you. With Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing, responding amen to the following invocations. May God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. 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 May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We have the newborn baby Jesus in figurine form at the door for those who are going to participate in our Rosca de Reyes baking uh, competition. It's really not a competition. If you're going to bake a cake, or bake a loaf of bread, you need to insert the baby Jesus into the bread, and then whoever gets the slice with the baby Jesus, as Marie said at the outset, is the winner. Now, I don't know what the winner gets. We haven't decided yet. Uh, and if anybody cracks a tooth on the figurine, we don't want no law lawsuits or anything like that. So we're going to have you sign a waiver before you take the baby Jesus. But he'll be available at the door. Go in peace. Merry Christmas. <laughs>